Greetings, everypony. My name is Ben, and I'm here to introduce you to a new project that I have been working on. It's called Ponify, and as the name might suggest, it is a tool for ponifying things, specifically websites. Ponify is a browser extension for converting every pony on the internet into a brony. Whether you're reading an article on Wikipedia, or browsing your favourite forum, never again will you have to see words like everyone and human, whatever that means. In this video, I'll introduce Ponify and show you what it does, how to get it, and how to use it. It is available for most modern browsers in one form or another. There is a browser extension for Firefox and Chrome, and a user script available for people using Safari, Opera, or another browser which supports user scripts. Unfortunately, there is currently no version for Internet Explorer. In this video, I will show you how to use Ponify with Firefox and Chrome. For users of Opera and Safari, there is another video which demonstrates how to use the user script with both browsers. Please watch this video first, since the second video discusses concepts which are introduced in this one. If you have any questions about support for other browsers, then please do not hesitate to email me. First of all, let's take a look at the basic features of Ponify, and see a quick demo of what it actually does. I probably should have mentioned this earlier in the video, but if you are not aware of the brony phenomenon, then there is a good chance that you are staring at your screen and questioning my grip on reality. If this is the case, I'll put a link in the description below that you should probably click and read before watching any further. Okay, good. As I was saying, let's take a look at Ponify. I'm currently using Chrome, so the first thing I want to do is head over to my blog. I'll now click the download link for Chrome. After a few seconds, this box should appear at the bottom, asking if you are sure you want to continue. I am, so I'll click continue. Next, this window will appear, asking to confirm the installation. So I'll click install, and after a few seconds, it's installed. Okay, so here's a quick demo of some of the features. By default, Ponify comes with a list of around 60 different words that it will replace with a Ponified variant. For a quick demo, I'll just Google what is perhaps the most commonly replaced word within the fandom, everyone. And you can see everywhere it previously said everyone, now says every pony. And that is essentially what Ponify does. The list of words which are Ponified is totally configurable, and you can also configure which websites are Ponified, and which ones aren't. There are several other features as well, and I'll get onto those in a moment. Let's first take a look at Ponify's preferences. I'm going to click the Ponify Tool button here, and go down to General Options. Here you can modify the general settings, and also restore default settings. Now as you can imagine, there are certain situations where Ponify can make things a bit confusing. Say you just came across the following sentence. Does Lyra really want to be human, or does she just want hands? By default, Ponify is configured to replace words in that sentence, which would mean that you would end up with the following sentence instead. Does Lyra really want to be a pony, or does she just want hooves? That would probably make you scratch your head for a few seconds. The simplest solution is to disable Ponify on websites that are already talking about ponies. But this is not always preferable, or convenient, and for that reason I have provided another solution. Ponify can automatically highlight words that have been Ponified. It can also display a tooltip when you hover your mouse over such words. This can eliminate any confusion in situations like the aforementioned. Personally, I prefer to just have tooltips enabled, since it is not as intrusive as highlighting. I've been using Ponify for a couple of months now whilst testing and improving it, and have found that enabling tooltips completely eliminates the problem. First of all, I'll do a quick demo with both highlighting and tooltips enabled. Okay, so I've enabled them, now let's see what happens when I search for everyone like I did before. As you can see, every occurrence of everyone has been replaced with a highlighted version, and if I hover my mouse over one such occurrence, you can see that a tooltip appears containing what it said prior to the ponification. Here's a quick demo with just tooltips enabled. Besides restoring defaults, the only other option available in general settings is to enable pseudo-threading. If you want an in-depth description of what this is, then check out the link in the description to the advanced documentation page on my blog. With a modern computer, there should be no reason to enable this, but if you are experiencing any drop in performance whilst using Ponify, then enabling it might help. Right, so let's move on to the next section as quickly as possible because I'm rambling, and this video is going to get far too long, far too quickly. 
The replacement list. This is the section where you can configure which words you want Ponify to Ponify. It should be quite self-explanatory. You can add words with the add row button and remove words by selecting the checkbox in the first column and clicking delete checked. To empty the list, click the checkbox at the very top to select them all and click delete checked. The last part of Ponify's preferences is the website list. This is where you can select exactly which websites you want to be Ponified and which ones you don't. You have two choices as to how this list is interpreted. You can have a white list, which means that the websites in the list are the only ones which will be Ponified. Or you can have a black list, which means that every website will be Ponified, apart from the ones in the list. For convenience, Ponify can be enabled and disabled using the toolbar icon. You can also use the toolbar icon to add websites to the website list without having to enter the address manually. Ok, so let's move on to Firefox. The Firefox add-on offers all the same features as the Chrome one, and has a very similar installation process. Simply navigate to my blog, and click on the Firefox download link. The add-on should download, and then this window should appear confirming the installation. Simply click install, and Ponify will install. After installation, you must restart Firefox. Once it has restarted, you can see that Ponify is successfully installed. Everything should be the same as with the Chrome extension. The only difference between the two versions is how the preferences look. Despite this, the layout is the same and should be easy enough to navigate after having seen the Chrome demo. And that concludes this introductory video to Ponify. Once again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to my channel and check out my blog. Thanks for watching.